I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Hey, what's up? JP Morgan here. So it's been a while and I want to share some stuff with you that I've been thinking about recently. Now, it's about the first thing is about this term alpha male. It's a term that's never really sat with me fully. Like, I mean, I like the idea of going first and being powerful and being a leader, um, but there's also an aspect of it that's never really fit for me. Something about it's always been a bit jarring or um, just didn't feel like it was complete a complete representation of what I wanted to identify with. And so I've always had a, a sense and some um, of, of a different way, a more nuanced way, but recently I've found some language that I could put to it that helped me to articulate it more powerfully and to actually make it more useful for myself. And so the idea started when I was out at Wolf Connection, a wolf sanctuary out here in California. I was invited out there by a friend with a group of other uh, coaches and uh, we were learning about the wolves and how they interact and how they relate. And it was so interesting. He told this story actually first off that there's a myth, I don't know, it's probably not true, maybe it is, but uh, there's a myth anyway that um, Neanderthals uh, actually turned into humans. And the way that that happened was that Neanderthals started domesticating dogs. But it wasn't that the Neanderthals just domesticated the dogs and the dogs became pets of the Neanderthals. It was that they were co-domesticating with each other. And what that means is that the dogs or wolves not only became friends with and became more tame with the humans and Neanderthals, but the, the, the Neanderthals learned to be social beings because they watched how the wolves interacted. And I, and I it's probably not true, but imagine if it is, and the idea that like we learn to be social from animals. I mean, even if it's not true that Neanderthals did, and then they had an epigenetic jump, and then they became humans because they were so socialized and they could make that growth. Even if that's not true, and just humans actually will get domesticated dogs and then became domesticated by dogs to become more social. Even either way, it's cool, it's interesting, and it just had me think about like all their animals that we've domesticated, like horses, right? Horses are domesticated by humans, but actually we have been domesticated by them into being more horse-like. So much of our thinking and way of being, look at all the cars out here right now, every single one of them, right? Running on horse power. Think about how ubiquitous the, the animal of horse is in our in ling language. And if it's in our language so much, how can that be crafting our way of being in our reality? Of course it is. And the same way the dogs, we've learned something from wolves and dogs about ways of being. That's in a bit of an aside, actually. Let me take it back to actually a wolf pack. And what am I actually talking about? That's just a kind of interesting thing. But oh, in a wolf pack, everybody has heard of the alpha wolf, right? The leader of the pack. And of course, it's the biggest, strongest, whatever. Old news. And that's the part that kind of is okay, cool. And I like that at CrossFit. I want to be like first to finish the exercise. It's a little bit alpha, but, but there's more to it. There's more nuance and subtlety there. And the cool thing is that in a wolf pack, there's also, yeah, there's the beta and all the other wolves and stuff. But then there's the... Omega wolf, which is the wolf that's the quote unquote weakest or most vulnerable. Uh, maybe it's the wolf that was injured or that's sick at that moment. But this wolf plays an interesting role. The way I look at it, this isn't what was said there, but the way I look at it is all of the wolves look out for the ones that are more vulnerable than them, right? In a sense, they look out for each other. They're social. They take care of each other. And so the most vulnerable in the pack is actually the, uh, the nexus point of all of that collaboration. Um, it's, you could say it's the, it's the central axis of union. It's the force of union, the power source of union in the entire group is that Omega Wolf. And another cool thing that my friend Christina told me that was there that I missed was that the alpha male, the alpha wolf in the pack, while it uh, eats first, right? Very alpha, I eat first when there's a kill, when there's a pack kill. Um, I take the best piece of meat and I save it for the Omega. Now that's service, right? That's, that's great leadership. And so when you look at this, you might think, oh, wait a minute. Oh, so is it, about, is it about not being the alpha? It's about being the omega? No, that's not it either. And this is an important point. I think it was Viktor Frankl in one of his lectures, he said, um, if we compare man to animal, we deprive him of that which makes him distinctly human. And so I'm always really careful when using animal analogies and references um, when talking about uh, how we be as a human. Well, we're just animals, really. Well, actually, if you say that, then you just like, take the dry eraser and you wipe up all the part of the board that actually describes us, our human aspects. 
you, we, can, we can talk about our animal aspect, but when we do that, we're forgetting the rest that makes us actually distinct from animals. And so let's not do that. Let's talk about it but with the awareness that it's just a part or an aspect. Let's not make us animal. Let's talk about the aspects of us that are, and let's talk about what else we can do with that now that we know that. And so are we the alpha or are we the omega wolf? What are we supposed to be? No, it's not about which one are we as a, as a way of being. It's like which aspects of ourself can express all of the places in the wolf pack so I can be both the omega wolf and the alpha wolf. Surprise! But not only like today I'm the alpha, tomorrow I'm the omega. It's not about being the strong one today and the weak one tomorrow. It's not that so direct. And if you take it so super simple, you miss the, the subtlety and the nuance of it, which is where the real power lies. And so for me, it's looking at this as saying, oh, there's an aspect of myself that I want to be alpha. And there are aspects of myself that I want to be omega. Not on one day and the next, not even in one hour to the next hour. Actually, not even one minute to the next minute. I'm talking about simultaneously, I want parts of me to show up alpha and parts of me to show up omega. I want parts of me to be strong and parts of me to be vulnerable at the same time. And so what happens when you actually do both of those things simultaneously through different parts of yourself and the different aspects of your being, there's an integration, and that's where total and true power lies. I'm not talking about balancing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'm talking about simultaneity. I'm talking about uh, an integration. I'm talking about, like, a yin-yang is not two halves, so black on one side and white on the other, and it's balanced, right? It's two pieces that are, kind of, that are melting into each other, and there's a dot of the opposite in each. I mean, this is about uh, interrelating and simultaneity and paradox, and there's so much for me to share about how this actually pragmatically shows up. And, and can be used and utilized, and I have a number of distinctions that I want to share with you. So in the videos that are following, I'm going to be talking about not being an alpha male, but being an alpha omega male, being an alpha omega leader, being an alpha omega father, being an alpha omega husband, being an alpha omega business person, businessman, we could say, being an alpha omega creator. How is bringing the distinctions of being all aspects, both the top and the bottom, both the beginning and the end, how can bring all of that at the same time actually create more power, more impact, and a more enlightened way of being? I'll leave you with a quote, a biblical quote. I'm not a religious man, but this one, I think it just nails it. It's a single line, and it's powerful for me when I read it. It might not mean much to you yet, but I promise after the following videos and the distinctions I share, this one line will contain so much for you. The line is, I think it's written by, I don't know who wrote it, but it's a quote, a quote from Jesus. And I think it goes like this. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Talk to you soon. Much love. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, click the button, and also share with your friends, share the love, tweet it, Facebook it, Google Plus it, LinkedIn it, whatever you do, get it out there. And of course, if you really want to engage in this idea, down below in the comments, the discussion, the dialogue is where the best insights come. Challenge me, ask me questions, I will get back to you. Your ideas, your comments help me to create more videos. Finally, if you're interested in learning at all about what I do, my personal coaching for leaders, artists, musicians, sole proprietors, anybody who's a creative force in the world and creating their own things, check out my website. Also, if you're a coach and you wanna learn more about my apprenticeship or learn more about how I create coaching clients, check out my website, link down below. Much love.